uh, uh, introduction. So uh, there we are talking about approximating the total variation distance between two product distributions. So this talk is based on two joint works. The first one is a, a joint work with Han, Mark, and Jahan. This work is for the randomized approximation algorithm. And the next one is based on a joint work with the Tianren and the Li Chang. This is based. This is a deterministic approximation algorithm to this problem. So this talk is a very basic, and I mainly focus on the randomized algorithm, uh, which is a very simple algorithm. So feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Okay. So uh, the problem is that uh, suppose we are given two discrete distributions, p and q, over a finite domain omega, and uh, a natural question is how to measure the difference between two probability distributions. So there are many standard notions to estimate the differences. For example, we have the total variation distance, we have a KL divergence, and other divergences. So uh, in this talk, we focus on the total variation distance, a TV distance between two distributions. And just to recall the definition, given two distributions P and Q, their total variation distance is I enumerate all possible x from the domain omega, and I look at the probability of x in P and the probability of x in Q, take their difference, sum over all x together, and divide the whole sum by two. This is the standard definition of the total variation distance. And uh, equivalently, uh, it can be defined as we find a subset of the state space. So a subset of state space is an uh, event in the probability space. And we look at the, uh, what is the probability of this event in P and what is, this, uh, what is the probability of this event as in Q. And we take their difference. We find the uh, event that maximizes the difference, which also equivalent to define the total variation distance. So are you just talking about discrete probabilities? Discrete uh, distributions? Uh, probability distributions. Uh, discrete or continuous? Uh, discrete. So this omega is always a finite discrete uh, set. Okay. So okay, oh, but, but this picture is a continuous. Okay, <laughs> sorry for confusing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Just uh, uh, just give you intuition. The total variation distance is roughly the the area of this region, okay. which is the probability that is in P but not in Q. Uh, this area is the same as this area because of the symmetry. Okay, so a total variation distance have uh, many good properties. For example, it is a metric, and it can be characterized in different ways, which actually gives us many different ways to analyze the total variation distance between two distributions. For example, if you follow this definition, then we can pick an arbitrary event S and look at the difference. This will give us a lower bound over the total variation distance. So it has many applications. For example, it can be used to define the mixing time of Markov chain, and uh, it also uh, uh, used in many other places. So, uh, but in many applications, uh, such as analyzing the mixing time of Markov chain, we only need to analyze the lower or the upper bound of the total variation distance. But in this work, we consider the computational problem. So the problem is that given the description of two distributions, P and Q, and we want to compute their total variation distance. So by definition, there is a trivial algorithm. So we can just enumerate all the state in this space omega, and we sum over the differences. But the challenge part is that uh, distribution P and Q may have succinct descriptions, which makes the sample space exponentially large with respect to the input size. So uh, this trivial algorithm is a snow in this case. There are many examples of such uh, distributions. For example, the graphical models in machine learning and the spin systems in physics. So uh, perhaps one of the most simplest example is the product distribution. So what is the product distribution? We have a finite domain S. You can view it as the, the set of one, two, three, up to S. And we have N distributions, P1, P2, and Pn. Every pi is a distribution over this domain S, and we define p as the product distribution of p1, p2, and pn. So in other words, if we, if we draw a random sample from the product distribution p, 
this random sample is an n-dimensional random vector. And in every index i, uh, xi is an independent sample from the distribution pi. So uh, by this definition, we can easily to think that for every n-dimensional random vector x, the probability that x appears in the distribution p is just the product of all pi xi, because uh, every i xi is sampled independently from the distribution pi. So to describe the product distribution, we only need to, need to define this m marginal distributions. And uh, every marginal distribution pi is defined over the set s, so we just need s numbers to define the distribution pi which is what is the probability pi takes value one, takes value two, and so on. So the input size is Sm because we have m marginal distributions, but the sample space of this product distribution is S to the n, which is exponentially large with respect to the input size. So here is the uh, computational problem we considered in this work. So the input, uh, we input the two product distributions, P and Q, over the, over the uh, sample space, S to the M. Here, uh, P is described by the M marginal distributions, and Q is also described by M marginal distributions. And the algorithm want to output their total variation distance. Okay, so uh, this problem is uh, initiated by Bhattacharya et al. Uh, in last year. And in their paper, they, pro they proved an interesting result. Uh, this shows that even in the Boolean case, which means S equals two, uh, exact computing of the total variation distance between P and Q should be complete. So uh, this hardness results motivates the study of approximation algorithms. So in this work, we consider two kinds of approximation algorithm. The first is the deterministic algorithm. So the input contain error bound epsilon, and the algorithm has to output a number d hat, such that d hat approximates the total variation distance in relative error. And the running time of the deterministic uh, approximation algorithm, we call it fp -tus. The running time should be a polynomial in the input size and the one of epsilon. So, uh, we also studied the fp -RAS, which is a relaxed version. In this case, the algorithm is allowed to output a random number d hat, such that d hat approximates the true total variation distance with a probability at least two thirds. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, what is the, the results of the previous work. So the previous work gave both fp -TAS and fp -RAS for the total variation distance between two product distributions. However, uh, their algorithm only works for special class of uh, product distributions. So they require the distribution to be Boolean, and the one of the distribution only have a constant number of distinct marginals. Say the distribution, Pew, di sorry, the distribution Q can be the uh, uniform distribution in the Boolean domain. In this case, every marginal distribution is a uniform distribution over zero and a one, so there are only one distinct marginals. But in general, they, they may allow distribution Q have a constant many of uh, uh, distinct marginal distributions. And their randomized approximation algorithm can uh, work for other class of product distributions, but still have some additional conditions. So here is a, a natural open question. So uh, can we give fp -TAS or fp -RAS for the total variation distance between general product distributions? So uh, here is our results. Uh, uh, I have two works on this problem. Uh, one of them give uh, fp -TAS and the other give fp -RAS. Both of them works for general product distributions. The running time of the deterministic approximation algorithm is roughly O tilde n squared of epsilon log one over the total variation distance. So we may assume every marginal distribution uh, in the input is given in binary. So this log one over total variation distance is a polynomial in the input size. And our randomized algorithm is even faster. The running time is O tilde n squared over epsilon squared. Uh, 
our deterministic algorithm can slightly go beyond the product distribution. One example is that we can estimate the total variation distance between two Markov chains. So uh, what is the definition? So uh, what is the Markov chain? So Markov chain can be defined by its initial distribution pi and the transition matrix M. So uh, N step Markov chain X1, X2, Xn can be generated by we first uh, sample X1 from the initial distribution and we sample Xk uh, using the transition matrix and the state Xk minus one. So we can sample X1, X2 up to Xk. Similarly, we can sample y1, y2 up to, y, up to yn. So we have uh, two n-dimensional random vectors, and our algorithm can estimate the total variation distance between these two vectors. Um, OK, this is our main results. So any question about the problem definition and the result? OK, uh, now I will describe our algorithm so in this talk, I will mainly focus on the randomized algorithm because this algorithm is very simple. Now, before I introduce our algorithm, let's think a, a very natural estimator for the total variation distance. So by definition, the total variation distance between P and Q can be written in this form. We enumerate all X in the state space such that the probability of X in Q is greater than PX. Then we sum over all QX minus PX. So this is an equivalent definition of the total variation distance. Then we can take the Q out and write the total variation distance in this form. So this gives us a natural estimator to the total variation distance. We can define a random variable R, which is the ratio of Px over Qx, such that x is a random sample from the distribution Q. And uh, using this form, we can easily verify that the total variation distance between P and Q is the expectation of max 0, 1 minus R of this random variable R. And for product distribution, this random variable R is easy to sample from because we can first draw a random sample X from Q, then we can compute Px and Qx. We take the ratio, then we can get a random sample from R. So, okay. So here is a very simple uh, algorithm. We can draw a random sample of R, and uh, for every random sample, we compute max 0, 1 minus R, and take average. So it is easy to show that uh, this algorithm is an unbiased estimator to the total variation distance. Uh, but however, this algorithm can only approximate, uh, approximate the TV distance with additive error, which means the algorithm output a random number d hat, such that with high probability, d hat is within the range of total variation distance plus or minus epsilon. But uh, in the problem I defined before, what we want is the d hat that uh, uh, approximates the total variation distance with a relative error. So one can say, can we, uh, can we use the additive error to get the relative error approximation? In this case, the additive error should be epsilon times the total variation distance. But the total variation distance itself can be exponentially small, so which requires this algorithm to draw exponentially many number of samples to achieve the relative approximation error. So this simple idea does not work for this problem. Uh, oh, so uh, next I will uh, introduce our randomized algorithm, uh, namely our estimator to this problem. Uh, but I, I should remark that although this naive estimator does not work, but this ratio random variable actually captures the full information of the total variation distance. So in the end of this talk, I will tell you uh, how to use this ratio random variable to get a deterministic approximation algorithm to the total variation distance. But now let's focus on, let, 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 us, let me first introduce what is the uh, randomized algorithm. Now, to introduce our randomized algorithm, I need to introduce what is the coupling between two probability distributions. Now, suppose we have two distributions, P and Q, defined over the domain omega. And uh, a coupling, here P and Q can be arbitrary distributions, not necessarily the product distribution. Okay. A coupling of P and Q is a joint uh, distribution of two random variables, X and Y, such that X follows P and Y follows Q. Uh, the random variable x and y can be correlated with each other as long as their marginal distribution is correct. So let me show you a simple example. 
Suppose the P is a uniform distribution between 0 and 1, and Q is another distribution between 0 and 1, which take a value 0 with a probability 1 over 3. So a simple example of the coupling is the independent coupling. That is, we sample x from P and y from Q independently. If we do it in this way, then we can think in this coupling, the probability of x not equal to y is 1 over 2. Uh, but uh, we can, uh, next I will introduce another coupling that makes this probability smaller. So here is another way to couple the distribution P and Q. We first sample a random real number R between 0 and 1, uniformly random. Then uh, we set the variable x to be 0 if R smaller than 1 over 2. And we set a random variable i, random variable y to be 0 if r smaller than q0, which is 1 over 3. And x and y are defined using the same random variable r. So it is easy to think that x and y uh, follows the correct marginal distribution. But in this case, x and y are correlated with each other because they are defined using the same random variable r. So in this case, if x not equal to y, if and only if uh, r fall into this interval, so we can show that in this case, the probability in this coupling, the probability that x not equal to y is one over six, uh, which is exactly the total variation distance between p and q. Actually, this is the minimum probability we can achieve among all uh, all possible couplings. So. In general, we have the uh, following lemma, uh, which is called a coupling inequality. So for any two distributions, P and Q, for any coupling of P and Q, it holds that the probability of X not equal to Y is at least their total variation distance. And furthermore, there exists an optimal coupling that achieves the equality. Uh, such optimal coupling may not be unique, may not be unique but uh, they uh, always achieve this equality. Okay, so uh, when we know the coupling lemma, let's uh, go back to the problem of estimating the total variation distance between two product distributions. So uh, one natural question is what is the optimal coupling between two product distributions, P and Q? If we can find it, then we can compute the total variation distance. Uh, uh, we don't know what is optimal coupling, but here is a natural greedy coupling, which seems to be optimal. So, uh, okay, let's consider following greedy coupling of two product distributions, P and Q. We draw two n-dimensional random vectors, X and Y, such that X and Y are coupled as follows. For every index XI and YI, uh, XI follows the distribution PI and YI follows the distribution QI. We use the optimal coupling between PI and QI to couple xi and yi. And for different indices, they are coupled independently. Uh, so uh, this coupling seems to be the optimal coupling, but uh, it is not. Uh, one reason is that if it is an optimal coupling, uh, then we can easily compute the probability of x not equal to y in this coupling, which means that we can compute the total variation distance between p and q exactly. But the problem is sharply complete. Okay. Uh, another reason, another explanation is that in this coupling, uh, x1 and y1 are correlated with each other because they are draw from their optimal coupling. And similarly, x2 and y2 are correlated with each other. Uh, x1 and x2 are independent. It is necessary because x1 and x2 should uh, follow the product distribution P. And y1 and y2 are also uh, independent with each other. Uh, but however, in general, in a general coupling, x1 can be correlated with y2 and x2 can be correlated with y1. But in this optimal, but in this greedy coupling, they are independent. So the true optimal coupling can utilize the correlation in the middle to minimize the probability that x not equal to y. Okay, so, uh, so we know the greedy coupling is not optimal. But uh, another observation is that although this coupling is not optimal, it is not very far away from the optimal coupling. So uh, in the greedy coupling, x not equal to y greater than the total variation distance, this inequality follows from the coupling lemma. But on the other hand, this probability that most m times the total variation distance. 
it can be proved by a similar, a, a very simple union bound. So in the greedy coupling, the probability that x not equal to y by a union bound is the sum of the probability that xi not equal to yi. Because every xi and yi are coupled using the optimal coupling of their marginal distributions, so this sum is actually the sum of the total variation distance. Then we use a simple fact that the total variation distance between marginal distribution is smaller than the total variation distance between the whole distribution. So every, uh, every this, this total variation distance is smaller than the total variation distance between P and Q. With summation of n terms, so they are at most n times the total variation distance. Okay, this is the second property of this greedy coupling. And finally, the discrepancy of this greedy coupling can be computed efficiently. Uh, this is because every indices are coupled uh, independently. So in greedy coupling, x not equal to y is one minus the probability in greedy coupling that x equal to y. Because every index is coupled independently, this probability is just a product, so which is very easy to compute. Now, we have the three properties of the greedy coupling, so uh, we can give our estimator to the total variation distance between P and Q. So our estimator is that uh, it, uh, instead of estimating this uh, total variation distance between P and Q directly, we estimate uh, the value of this ratio. So the ratio is defined as the probability that x not equal to y in the optimal coupling over the probability that x not equal to y in the greedy coupling. So by coupling lem lemma, the numerator is just the total variation distance. And the denominator by the third property is very easy to compute. So if we can estimate this ratio, then we just times the ratio with the, uh, the denominator, then we can get uh, an estimate, uh, estimator to the total variation distance between P and Q. So why we should we do it? Uh, if you rem uh, remember that I, uh, uh, I just introduced a naive estimator that can estimate uh, the TV distance between P and Q with additive error. And we cannot transform it into a relative error estimator because the total variation distance between P and Q can be exponentially small. But here we estimate this ratio. The second property tells us that this, this ratio is at least one over M. So which is one over a polynomial in M. So which in some sense means this ratio is easy to estimate with a relative error. Okay. So uh, what is our estimator uh, to this ratio? So our estimator is defined as follows. So we first define distribution pi. The pi is the distribution of x in the greedy coupling conditioning on x not equal to y. So uh, basically pi is the distribution over n dimensional random vectors. For every uh, n dimensional random vector sigma, the, the probability of sigma in pi is equal to uh, in this greedy coupling, conditioning on x not equal to y, the probability that x takes the value sigma. Okay. Next, we define a function f, which maps n-dimensional random vector to a real number. So this function is defined by f sigma is the uh, probability in optimal coupling x equal to sigma and x not equal to y over the probability in greedy coupling x equal to sigma and x not equal to y. Uh, and the numerator can be uh, written in this form. Um, I don't give you a proof, but it's just uh, uh, using some simple observation of the optimal coupling. Okay. And finally, our estimator is F sigma, where sigma is a random sample from the distribution pi. So uh, uh, why does this estimator work? We can calculate the expectation of our estimator that is, we sample sigma from pi, we look at the expected value of f sigma. Uh, by a, you can, uh, by, you can you plug this conditional distribution into here, and uh, by, by some calculation, you can verify that the expectation is exactly the ratio we want to estimate. And this ratio is at least one of n. The second uh, property is that the variance uh, of, f, uh, of this estimator is also small. This is uh, due to the fact that uh, one can verify that for every sigma, uh, the value of f sigma is always between zero and one, which means the variance of this estimator is at most one. 
So given these two properties, we can have a very simple Monte Carlo algorithm to estimate this ratio. Because the expectation have a, a one over polynomial lower bound, and the variance is small. In this case, we need, only need to draw random sample of f sigma for t times and take the average. So we sample sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma t independently from the distribution pi, then calculate the value of f sigma 1, f sigma 2, up to f sigma n, then output the average value. Uh, by a, a Chebyshev's inequality, we can show that uh, this return value approximate this ratio. And because we can exactly compute this probability, so we can estimate the total variation distance between p and q. But uh, to get the full algorithm, we still need to uh, solve two problems. The first problem is how to draw a random sample sigma from this distribution pi. And the second problem is that given the value of sigma, how to compute the uh, function f sigma. OK. Uh, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I will not give the detail, but the, the idea is that to compute f sigma, we only need to compute the denominator. And because the denominator is the, the probability of some event in the greedy coupling, and the greedy coupling is a simple product distribution because we couple every index independently, so this probability is easy to compute. So it is not a problem. Then to, ge to generate a random sample from pi, Perhaps the one natural idea is to try rejection sampling. So say we draw a random sample from greedy coupling and uh, reject the sample if x equal to 1. Uh, but uh, this rejection sampling is not efficient because the probability of x not equal to y may be very, very small. We need to repeat exponentially many number of times to think x equal to x not equal to y. But it is still not a problem. We can sample pi from, by using the self-reducibility. So I think the, the reason is that uh, uh, because pi is defined by the greedy coupling conditioning on some event, and the probability of this event is easy to compute, and the greedy coupling itself is the product distribution. So this, uh, intuitively, this distribution pi uh, is easy to sample from. Okay, so the actual algorithm is sample sigma index by index. Uh, but uh, in this talk, I skip this detail. Okay, this finishes our uh, randomized approximation algorithm. So, any questions here? Okay. Uh, good. Now, uh, next, uh, I will briefly introduce our deterministic uh, approximation algorithm to this problem. So, uh, just to recall that uh, uh, in the beginning, I defined a ratio random variable R, which is the probability of Px over the probability Qx of Qx, uh, sorry, which is the Px over Qx, where x is a random sample from the distribution Q. And, uh, uh, and this ratio random variable R uh, encodes the total variation distance between P and Q. So uh, I, just, I just use the notation total variation distance of R to denote this expectation. Uh, which is exactly the total variation distance between P and Q. Okay, uh, let's see some example. Now suppose P1 and Q1 are distribution of weather, and P2 are, and Q2 are distribution of uh, uh, natural numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we calculate their, their ratio, uh, this ratio random variable, uh, we can find that these two pair of distributions actually have the same ratio random variable R. Uh, which is this variable that takes the value two over three with half probability and takes the value four over three with half probability. So by this equation, we immediately know that the total variation distance between P1 and Q1 is the same as the total variation distance between P2 and Q2. So this ratio random variable R can preserve the full information of the total variation distance. Furthermore, it can also uh, it, may it may also compress some redundant information. Now, let's say, for example, uh, P1, uh, P1, Q1, the domain of P1, Q1 are the weather, the sunny day or rainy day, but the uh, domain of P2 and Q2 are natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Actually, the domain is not very important for the total variation distance. 
we can replace sunny day with the number one, rainy day with the number two. Their total variation distance remains unchanged. And this uh, ratio random variable R automatically uh, removes such a useless information because R is always a discrete random variable defined, on, uh, defined over real numbers. And then the second, uh, we can think that the domain size of P2 and Q2 are four, but the domain size of R is two. So in some sense, it also compresses some information. Uh, okay, and, and, and uh, uh, the next uh, property of this ratio random variable is that it have a good behavior for the uh, product distribution. So let's say if R1 is the ratio of P1, of P1 and Q1, R2 is the ratio of P2 and Q2, then we, uh, then we know that R1 dot R2 is the ratio of two product distributions. Here I need to explain the notation. We have two products here. Here is a dot product, here is a cross product, okay. So we use P1 cross P2 just to denote the product distribution of P1 and P2, uh, which is I defined in the beginning of this talk. And we use R1 dot R2 to denote the distribution of the product of two independent random real numbers. So say we can sample a random, uh, because R1 is a, is a discrete distribution over real numbers. So we can sample a number R1 from the distribution R1, and we sample a random number R2 from the distribution R2. Then we take the product of R1 and R2. So the product of two real numbers is one real number. And the distribution of this real number is denoted by R1 dot R2. So, uh, this pro uh, so this property tells us that if we consider the uh, total value, if we consider the ratio of product distributions, we can just times their ratio together independently. Okay, uh, if we know this property, then we can have a simple algorithm, also naive algorithm to compute the total variation distance. Now, for every marginal distribution PI and QI, we can compute their ratio distribution RI. Here I compute the full distribution, not just to draw a random sample because we want to a deterministic algorithm. And we can do it because the support of PI and QI is S, so the support of R is also S. Then next we set a ratio random variable R1 to one to be R1, and we set a ratio random variable R1 to two to be R1 dot R2. Uh, in general, in the i step, we set R1 to I to be uh, R1 to I minus one dot Ri, and uh, finally we return the total variation distance encoded by R1 to N. So uh, this simple algorithm actually exactly computed the total variation distance between P and Q. Uh, so this algorithm is very slow. The reason is that once we uh, times two ratio together, their size of their support can be increased by a factor of S. So we do it in n steps, and finally, the support of R1 to n can be exponentially large. So, we, uh, so it will cost us a lot of time to compute the distribution of R1 to n. So our idea for the deterministic approximation algorithm is that uh, we, don't want, we cannot compute R, the ratio distribution R1 to n, but we somehow compute a sparsified distribution R hat 1 to n. And the total variation distance encoded by R hat one to n can approximate the total variation distance encoded by the uh, real ratio R one to n. So if, if we can do it, we just return uh, this total variation distance. Okay, so here is the uh, framework of our algorithm. First, uh, we compute the ratio uh, random variable for every marginal distribution. Then in the first step, we let R hat one to one to be R1. And in the second step, we let R, we first compute R hat one to one times the, uh, times the distribution, uh, dot the distribution R2. You know that after this step, the domain size of this distribution can be S times the domain size of, uh, of this distribution. But next, we apply a sparsifier, a sparsifier step we specify the domain of the R prime one to two to get the, uh, the ratio of random variable R hat one to two. So after the specification, we can guarantee the domain size of output random variable is bounded. 
So we do it in every step, and finally we can get to the sparsified uh, uh, ratio distribution, r hat 1 to n, and we return the total variation distance encoded by r hat 1 to n. So uh, the key of this algorithm is what is this uh, sparsified subroutine? So uh, let me explain. So the sparsified subroutine takes a input distribution r prime, so because every ratio of random variable is a discrete distribution uh, from where well, every element takes the value from real in real numbers between zero and infinity. So we have this discrete distribution. And our algorithm uh, partition the whole interval zero to infinity into a set of disjoint intervals. Then we then one interval may contain many elements in this input distribution. We merge them into one element. Now, for example, in this case, the last interval contains three elements, x1, x2, and x3. We merge them into one element. The probability of this new element is just the sum of the probability r prime, uh, so the sum of these three probabilities. And the value of this element is actually the average of uh, x1, x2, and x3 with respect to the distribution r prime. So after this sparsification step, uh, we can see that no matter how large the domain of r prime is, the domain size of r hat is always the num at most the number of intervals. So we can control the domain size of the output distribution. Okay, so the next question is uh, uh, how to partition the interval. We do it in two steps. We first partition the interval uh, between zero and one. So we partition it into a1 to a0, a2 to a1, a3 to a2, up to am to am minus one. Then we partition uh, the interval one to infinity. Similarly, we're just uh, using the number one of a1, one of a2, and so on. Now, okay, so the question is how to partition the interval between zero and one. So uh, we need to satisfy two conditions. The first is that the first interval should be uh, very small. And the second property uh, roughly says that the length of the uh, interval increase by a factor of one plus epsilon s in every step. So the interval becomes longer and longer. Uh, in the algorithm, we can set the parameter uh, delta s to be very small and epsilon s to be epsilon over n. So uh, we can show that the number of intervals is small. So which means after the sparsification, the domain size of the output distribution is small. We can bound it by n over epsilon times log one over the total variation distance. And uh, also we need to control the error introduced by the sparsification because after the sparsification we will lose some information and we need to show that uh, it does not have a huge impact to the final total variation distance outputted by the algorithm. So in the paper we actually introduced a, a new metric between two ratio distributions and we show that after one sparsification step, uh, there are the, the distance between, in this metric, between input distribution and output distribution is small. And, uh, and we can show that if the distance with respect to the, this metric is small, we can show the uh, final answer is correct. But here I won't give you the detail because I think I just have one or two minutes. So, so let's summarize. Uh, in this talk, we, uh, we, we started the problem of approximating the total variation distance between two product distributions. We have both a randomized algorithm and a deterministic algorithm. And uh, our algorithm can slightly go beyond the product distribution. For example, the TV distance between two Markov chains. Now for the open problem, one open problem is that can, can we, in, the, in our deterministic algorithm, uh, the running time depends on log one over the total variation distance. So can we remove this factor or this factor is necessary for deterministic algorithm? So I don't know about it, I don't know. And the, the, the second open problem is that can we generalize uh, our technique to more general distributions? Uh, very recently, uh, in September, there is a paper in RCAB uh, that generalized our greedy coupling to, to some partial or local coupling technique, and they can uh, approximate the total variation distance between two Bayes networks uh, defined on the same deck with the bounded trees or log entries, or maybe yeah, 
uh, O log n trade width. Okay. And then the last open question is that uh, uh, is there any relation between approximating TV distance with the sampling and the counting? Okay, and that's all. Thank you. Questions? I have a dumb question. So for the deterministic algorithm, don't you need to know the answer to set the parameter? Uh, we can have a lower bound. Oh, you have a bound, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess it also begs the question, uh, what if you have mixture models and mm. prolistic circuits then? Um, yeah, uh, I think our deterministic algorithm needs, uh, requires us to compute uh, the conditional marginal distributions. And in general, the marginal distribution is not very easy to compute. So for example, for a graphical model with unbounded tree width, it's, uh, it's not easy to compute the marginal. Right, but for, for the tractable probabilistic circuits where you have, I mean, it, what you have is really a simple probabilistic circuit, which is the product of independent Bernoullis. Mm -hmm. If you now had a sum of those, yeah, yeah. could you still approximate? Uh, the product of, and the mixture of the... Yeah, so a mixture oh. of, 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 okay. of these. Uh, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, maybe we can try offline. Uh, is there anything that you could say about the relationship of this work with the, um, like, Sahai and Vedan's uh, work on... Um, uh, you know, the deciding uh, statistical closeness or farness for uh, sampleable distributions sampled by Boolean circuits? Uh, yes, that problem is, uh, I, I know is, F, it, it, it is hard in general. It, well, it's complete for statistical zero yeah, knowledge, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, but our, yeah, yes, for general, it's probably in the hard, but uh, uh, our technique only works for some very special distributions, such as the product distribution. Right, yeah. right. So you, but but none of their techniques or your techniques. I mean, they have these interesting techniques, polarization kind of lemma. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that that would apply in general to to any kind of distribution. But whether or not those techniques would be useful for what you're doing. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You could be, but uh, I. No, I didn't see any direct relations between our technique and their techniques. Maybe we can try later. Thanks. Other questions? So, uh, could you could you hint how to generalize this to Markov chains? Uh, you, sorry, uh, we, 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 our deterministic uh, uh, approximation algorithm can generalize to Markov chains. So. Yeah, ju just a hint how this. Uh, Works. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, so how does this work for Markov chains? Just like to. Okay, just a high level idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because in Markov chain, you can compute the conditional marginal distribution. So you can do it uh, in a pro you can do it step by step. So condition on the value of a previous step, you can compute the marginal distribution of the next step. Um, so we can maintain we instead of maintain ratio, we we maintain some conditional ratio. So the ratio conditioning on the total variation distance uh, of two Markov chains conditioning on one xi takes a specific value. Then we can merge the conditional ratios into the, the ratios we want to compute. Uh, probably something like a forward algorithm for yeah, yeah. total okay. yeah. All right, thanks for again. Okay. okay.